Shalom, welcome to Erev Shabbat, Parsha Mishpatim. Zohar, we're in Tzfat, Ira Kodesh, and a quick word from this week. Zohar tells us that the Mishpatim, all the statutes and judgments that God gives us for everyday life, are also, also a paradigm for the pathway to the world to come. And the laws of, specifically, reincarnation. Now, reincarnation is one of the most difficult things in Judaism to, to understand, to accept, to believe in, and, you know, it's um, something that kind of grows on you. When I first account, encountered reincarnation in Judaism, I was like, this is too big for me, I'm going to put this aside because it sounds too crazy, too wild, I couldn't believe it. And then I, I saw people doing a CPR, I'm bringing people back to life on the sidewalk after an accident, I said, oh, maybe that's what the the Torah is talking about, that the doctors would be, bring people back to life through, uh, you know, electroshock. And I said, no, that can't be it. That sounds a little bit too uh, tight uh, a uh, conception of the idea. And then one day, I don't know how it happened, but I suddenly realized that the spark of God in me, that tiny, tiny little spark of divinity that's in every Jew, is part of God, and therefore it cannot die. And therefore, if I cannot die because I'm part of that ori original Oversoul, the master soul, the Shekhinah, then it makes total sense that we could come back again and again and again until we get it right because that spark is not going anywhere besides this world or the spiritual realms that are above the physical plane. So we understand that, that reincarnation is a difficult subject. The laws that surround it are complex. But the, the Rabbi Shimon Bar Chai, in the, in the beginning of this week's Parsha, tells us in the Zohar that, that there's People that come back because they need to fix what they haven't fixed. Then there's the people that come back for the sake of other people. And then there are people that are righteous tzaddikim, and they come back to bring other people back. So all of these examples of why people come back, <laughs> here's my lovely wife, they all come back not just for themselves, because you can even come back for your spouse, or you can come back for your children. And it depends on the choices that each soul is given when it leaves this body, because we are given choices before when we leave this body. And so we have to kind of see that it's a much broader situation that, that God throws into, into a pit of hell, because the Zohar says that hell is actually easier than reincarnation. The, the migration of the soul from, from level to level to level to, is, is a difficult thing, depending on one thing, how much we have refined ourselves, how much we have purified ourselves. So the, this world is a world of rectification, of, reincar of refinement, refinement of our traits, refinement of our speech, our thoughts, and our actions. Rabbi Nachman says it in a beautiful way. He says that you get to the world to come on the 613 avenues of humility that were first carved from the soul of Moses. Okay, so Moses himself was the paradigm of humility, and humility is being humble, and hum humility is therefore the ticket into the world to come. Now, it seems like the hardest path, but it's actually the simplest in terms of having to come back or having to go through hell or having to go, to, to go through all these different tests of refinement. If we can just grasp on to the idea of humility, and then we enter because the smaller we are, the more places we can enter. And the, what's the smallest thing in the universe? Hashem, because he's completely not physical. So he fits everywhere. And he can find his way into anybody, into your mind, into your heart, into your thoughts, into your feelings. And so when you're that small, so to speak, when you can make yourself that small, then you can enter into, past the gates of judgment and into the realm of the light of Hashem. And so the Rebbe promises that a tzaddik, a tzaddik is somebody that only comes to this world to do Torah and mitzvot, to refine that himself through the Torah and mitzvah. So we can refine ourselves uh, through having a job and working hard physically or working hard mentally or emotionally. But all the work of this world is the refinement of character. It's not about 9 to 5, 24-7, that a person earns a paycheck, that that's what the work is for. The, all the work, Rabbi Nachman says, of our refinement, our work in the world to earn a living. The making of money is designed to pay us for the hard work of refining our characters. 
So once we refine our characters in this world, then what's left is Torah and mitzvot, learning and praying, praying for others, praying for the Shekhinah, praying for the Divine Presence to come to this world, praying for, for God to, to come back to the world in order that the entire creation is elevated to its visionary beginning. And, and I think it's exciting to be part of that. So God bless you all. Have a great Shabbat. We'll see you next week on all the outlets. Shabbat Shalom.